everybody. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. This is Dr. Kelly of Discovery Health. For those of you who haven't joined me before or maybe are new to my Facebook Lives, I've actually been doing them on Wednesday nights for a year already. Wow, that's a lot of Facebook Lives. But my name is Dr. Kelly. I am a holistic health nurse practitioner, and I've been a nurse practitioner for 20 years already. I've really been practicing um, holistic medicine and functional medicine over the last seven years for reasons just like this amazing story that we're talking about tonight. So hello everybody, thank you for joining, thank you for watching live, thank you for sharing and watching the replay. Please chime in, I want to know you're here. I'm going to be talking a lot tonight at the board so I won't see all of your comments, but I do come back later and try to answer them if I don't address them. Hey Tony, in the talk while um, it's live. So this one, it's kind of scary, right? I mean... Some of you, if you if you read the first post, if you read the teaser, and I'm going to write this all up for you later as well, but, oh, my God, her TSH is 78. No, really, it's 78. And for most of you following me, you know a little bit about thyroid. You've done some of your own research. Hi, Becky. So I know you know that that's not normal. Normal? Yeah, two. Two would be good. She's at 78. Oh, my God, is she dying? Let's just get that out of the way right now. Hi, Nancy. This woman, I just want you to know that, hi, Amanda, she is doing amazing, okay? She was shocked at her result, like totally surprised, like, well, that's not, that can't be me. I mean, literally, I got a call from the medical director from the lab to say, you know what, we've, we saw this, we've rerun it, we've double checked it. Hi, Stacia. We've wanted to make sure that the result was really accurate and it's accurate. So your patient must have just stopped taking her thyroid medicine and, you know, they do that sometimes and it throws the labs all off and that's what she was trying to tell me she thought probably happened and this is a medical doctor. And this exact scenario is really probably why any medical doctor that you've seen, and this is my own theory, okay? Somebody, if you've got a different experience or if you're a medical doctor, you've got a different opinion, tell me. But this is what I think. This exact example is why they want nothing to do with desiccated thyroid. They want to stick with their Synthroid because it's safe and they know what's going to happen. This gets a little screwy sometimes. But this woman is doing amazing, okay? When I talk to her, I ask her, how's your energy? How are you feeling? She's like, great. My energy's good. I wake up early. I've got a lot of energy. I do everything I want throughout the day. You know, I'm tired at 9 o'clock at night, and then I sleep good. Okay. Does that sound like hypothyroidism? How's your hair doing? She's like, oh, my God, my hairdresser keeps commenting on my hair. She's like, look at this. She's showing me. She's like, look at all this new growth. She's like, it's growing. It's getting so thick, and it's growing. And my hairdresser is like, where are you getting all this hair from? Does that sound like hypothyroidism to you? How's your skin doing? Skin's doing great. It's not dry. Are you gaining any weight? Nope. Weight's been good. Weight's been doing fine. How about constipation? Has constipation come back? She's like, no, balls are moving fine. They're moving every day, sometimes twice a day. And I said, okay, one more question. How about that back pain? When she and I first met, she had a lot of back pain. Now, some of you are thinking, what does that have to do with thyroid? It was one of her symptoms. She was not managed. She had autoimmune or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. She has that, although that's under control. I'd like you to know that as well. Her TPO antibodies are actually normal as her TSH went up to 78. Um, so that's good. But her back pain, she's like, oh, yeah, I haven't had that back pain in forever. As soon as we started to treat her thyroid and got her starting to feel good and enough thyroid hormones, her back pain has gone away and hasn't come back. So don't worry. This woman is okay. She feels great. In fact, she feels amazing. 
And that's why this just came up. I thought it was a perfect opportunity to explain it to you why I wasn't freaking out and why she wasn't freaking out either. So I'm going to switch my camera view so we can go talk at the board. All right. And so these were her labs. TSH, 78. Oh, my God. Do I like that at 78? No. I don't want it to stay at 78 either. And we're going to do something about that. We already have done something about that. But I want to explain to you why I'm not worried, why I know why it elevated, and why we have a plan that's going to work just fine. Okay? Again, the 78 can be scary. And if you or if she had just had that tested at her primary care doctor's place, they would have said, oh, my God, you know, we need to get you on Synthroid. This is horrible. You're so poorly managed, da, 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 and really would have scared her. But the other question that I asked her when we met was, what did you think when you saw your thyroid results? Because I wanted to know, what's, what's her thought process? You know what she said to me? Because she's smart, and she's been listening, and she's been learning. She said, well, my free T3 was good. So I wasn't too worried. Perfect. She's a smart cookie. She said, you know, you've always told me that's the most important one. The free T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. That's why she's not having any symptoms. All of the cells in her body, her follicles, her hair follicles, are getting plenty of thyroid hormone. But then what's going on with her TSH? I'm going to explain this feedback loop a little bit and how it can be misleading. She's feeling great. She's got enough of the active thyroid hormone. So she wasn't worried. Perfect. That's good because if she freaks out and she gets all stressed out, can that affect how you feel and affect your thyroid? Absolutely. So she was calm and cool because she knew she was doing good. She was happy with her free T3. That looks great. Her free T4 was only 0.5, so it's on the low side of normal, just at the bottom of normal. We definitely want to see that go up. But it being at 0.5 sure doesn't explain 78. Let's go over here a little bit. Let's walk through what's happening in the body so you can understand that trigger a little bit. So over here is my wonderful drawing of a head. Note the nose and the lips. Inside here, the brain, hypothalamus and pituitary. They're very important. They play a role with, right here, this little orange butterfly, your thyroid gland. So the process goes, the TRH, thyroid releasing hormone or thyroxine releasing hormone, stimulates TSH. We're all familiar with TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. They used to test TRH, but it's harder to test. It's really easy to test TSH. So thyroid-releasing hormone from the hypothalamus triggers the thyroid-stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary, which goes to the thyroid and says, hey, thyroid, we need more thyroid hormones. Can you make us some? And it does. It makes T3 and T4 and T1 and T2 and reverse T3. And calcitonin is actually on the parathyroid, which is on the thyroid. So your thyroid gland is really responsible for these six hormones. But, now this is the kicker. This is a negative feedback loop, okay? So it goes circles around like this. The strongest message that's given in this feedback loop comes from T4, who goes to thyroxine releasing hormone and says, hey man, I'm low. I, we don't have enough of this. We need a little bit more. So it tells TSH, hey pal, kick it up a notch, kick it up a notch. So the TSH goes up and the TSH goes up because you need more hormone. Goes to the thyroid and it makes more hormone. Your thyroid makes a lot of T4 and a little bit of T3. That's probably why it's more sensitive to the T4. But let's go back and look at her again. Not the TSH, okay? But look at the free T4 and the free T3. Free T4, bottom end of normal. Free T3, actually top end of normal. It looks great. It's amazing. Hmm. Thyroid hormones are okay. 
why is this feedback loop keep saying, jacking up the TSH, make more, make more, make more, make more, right? It's really going off of that T4. Does she need more T4? Yes. It is not wrong from that perspective. But it's a far cry. 78 is an amazing TSH, right? That's high. And when, when I've seen TSHs that high before, literally people have no hormone, like almost zero. Is that her with a free T3 of four? That's not her at all. So it doesn't match. If we only looked at TSH, we would be 100% misled. We'd say, oh my God, you have such a thyroid problem. What's going on with your thyroid? And she's like, well, I feel good. Okay. And for all of you out there who get your TSH checked and your doctor tells you your TSH looks fine and you're like, but my hair is falling out and I'm so sluggish. I can't get up in the morning. I have tons of fatigue. I keep gaining weight. I'm so constipated. And you name all of the symptoms of hypothyroidism, but they tell you that your TSH is normal. Hmm. You should question that. You need to know what these are. Actually test the thyroid hormones. So TSH is a brain hormone that's involved in this feedback loop. And it's supposed to tell us, do you have enough thyroid hormone or not? In this example, the TSH is telling us she doesn't have enough. But when we test it directly, we find out, yeah, actually she does. She, we can tweak her, though. She could use a little more T4. She doesn't need any more T3. And I know that might be confusing, but I hope as we work through this, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Because I'm going to carry you through this whole graph, which starts with the thyroid here. And then we're going to look a little bit deeper, and we look a little bit deeper into what's actually happening inside the thyroid. Before we do that, let me remind you right here. This is T4. This is the chemical structure, my beautiful drawing of the chemical structure of T4, thyroxine. Two ingredients. Remember two ingredients that you have to have to make thyroid hormone. The green structure is tyrosine. You get that through your food. You get it readily in your animal products and in dairy products and in nuts and seeds and a lot of different products, even fruits and vegetables. Okay, So we're usually not deficient in tyrosine. And then the little orange um, circles there are iodine. Iodine's a key player in this story because often when I want to get T, when I want to get the T4 to increase, I get people started on iodine because 90 to 95% of people are deficient in iodine, especially in the Midwest. We don't get enough of it through our food because our soil is depleted. We don't eat enough seafood because our seas are contaminated. And so we're low, very, very low on a crucial ingredient, iodine. Just giving the body more iodine can increase the T4. Okay, so that's important to know. It's a very important ingredient. Let's look at the thyroid gland here. And I've got a little circle right here because we're going to take a little snip bit out. This is one follicle inside the thyroid gland. And there are hundreds of thousands of these in there, each doing their own little job. When I need you to understand, and I know it might be hard for you to read um, unless you close up, but this is the bloodstream, and this is where we make thyroid hormones inside the follicle in the thyroid. So this little symporter right here has some key ingredients. We need sodium. How many times have I talked about people with a thyroid problem adding salt to their diet? Sodium or Na, is sodium, okay? Sea salt is a great form of sodium. Don't do bleached and formaldehyde and texturized salt, table salt. You want actual real salt from the earth because it gives you other minerals too. But right next to sodium is iodide, okay? It's an I with a negative sign, and both sodium and iodine together need to get inside the thyroid gland, okay? Iodine can't get in on its own. 
It needs sodium. They work together. Once they both, um, once they join, they can go through the symporter, and now they're in side that follicle to make thyroid hormone, okay? So let's move over here. This is that same exact thing. Sorry, when I step away from my computer too long, it goes out on me, and then I can't see what's happening. So iodide, I with a negative. Here is our NIS, sodium iodide symporter. This is really key. This is the biggest part of what's happening inside this person's body because you only think of TSH as stimulating over here in this feedback loop. That's all you've ever been told and taught. But I'm here to tell you that TSH is thyroid stimulating. And in the thyroid, in the follicle, is the NIS. And TSH stimulates more NIS in the presence of more iodine. So as a person starts taking iodine, very common for their TSH to go up, which is the exact opposite of what you would first expect to see. Because when they start taking iodine, they should be making more T4, so their TSH should be normal, you know, or go down a little bit. But you have to understand that TSH does more than just that feedback loop. And when your thyroid needs more iodine, it's going to go up to stimulate more symporters, sodium iodine symporters. Okay? So the iodide gets in with the sodium, gets into the thyroid gland, okay, through a process of oxidation. We've talked about this before. It turns iodide into iodine. Okay, that's why we've talked about getting both forms in your body. This process called organification, which simply means adding iodine to something. That's organification, adding iodine. When we do that, we can then make our MIT, which is T1, our DIT, or for... Uh, T2, excuse my stutter, um, T3, and then T4. So remember, it's a tyrosine with one iodine. It's a tyrosine with two iodine. It's tyrosine with three and tyrosine with four iodine. So if this, if we don't have these symporters, we can't get the iodide in to make your thyroid hormones. Okay, and now I've shown you this before in different forms because it also plays a huge role in autoimmune disease. And too much oxidation, too much hydrogen peroxide because we've got this um, oxidase system and calcium speeds that up and iodinated lipids keep that under control. But if we get too much hydrogen peroxide, we get destruction happening inside the thyroid gland, and that prompts those thyroid antibodies to start. So again, in this person, she had elevated TPO antibodies, and when we recheck them, they're back to normal. Fantastic. We've been working on that. We've been cleaning up this system. We've been calming down the damage. We've been stopping the oxidation destructive process and she's been taking an increased amount of iodine, which is prompting her TSH to continue to go up because it's going to stay elevated until her thyroid has enough iodine inside it. And it says, we don't need to make any more of these symporters. We've got enough now. We're flooding the thyroid with iodine. We're doing good and then the, the TSH is going to come back down. For one person, that might be three or four months. For another person, it might be six months, maybe even a year. Now, we're not going to let her stay at 78, but even to have a TSH of 10 or 20 when you're on iodine is a response, a normal response of your body, of the thyroid, to make more symporters so that you can use 
the iodine that you're taking to help your thyroid, okay? So thyroid releasing hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone come from the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Send the message to the thyroid gland to make more hormone. But this feedback loop is heavily dependent on T4. So in our case today, yes, her T4 is a little bit on the low side. We're going to do something about that. But her T3 shows me why she has no symptoms. Her body is doing quite well with lots of thyroid hormone. We just need to do a little bit of tweaking. This TSH is going to start to come back down. Maybe it was even higher. I don't know. But it's going to start to come back down as we monitor it as she gets enough iodide into her thyroid itself. Right now, remember that high TSH is stimulating the thyroid to do this. Make more of these. We can't get sodium in. We can't get iodine in without it. So the TSH is responsible for stimulating it so you can use that iodine. Now, what I did specifically with her is we um, are keeping her on iodine. We actually bumped up her iodine a little bit because seeing that TSH so high, her body's, give me more, give me more. We got to use more. I know her destructive process has calmed down a lot by the response in her antibodies. I know that the destructive process and um, her overall thyroid health is doing amazing because of how well she feels and all of her symptoms, as well as her free T3 looking great. She's on desiccated thyroid, which gives her both T4 and T3. Very, very common for me to see a good level of T3 and a little bit lower level of T4 because the concentration from that desiccated thyroid out of a pig is that, okay? It's just a little bit different than ours. So I always expect when I have somebody on the right dose, they're going to have a good T3. They're going to be feeling great. Their T4 is going to look a little bit lower. Giving them iodine keeps the T4 where they feel great too, and we can usually stay very well balanced. Other people, we get a little bit out of whack. She's going to take a little bit more T4 and T4 only. I'm not increasing her nature thyroid because she doesn't need more T3. She doesn't need more of that combination. She just needs a little tweak with a little bit of T4 because I don't want her TSH so crazy high. It's still going to keep stimulating the thyroid. Um, to make more of those symporters. She's going to be getting a lot of that iodine in. Her body has been responding amazingly. She's doing wonderful. And so that is the story why you don't need to freak out when your TSH goes up if your scenario is similar. Okay, so I hope that made sense. I'm going to look back at a few comments and um, see if I can answer any. Um, not too many. Hello, though. The, lots of people said hello. Um, oh, Stephanie Groots, you are too kind. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Please make sure you guys share um, as well. I always appreciate that. I'm trying to get out more. I'm trying to educate more. And, you know, I look at things a little bit differently than most medical providers do. Stephanie Groots is also a nurse practitioner who is very holistic. She's in Iowa. So if anybody listening is looking for an amazing nurse practitioner, please look her up. Um, hi, Joanne. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> you don't have to remember this. It's my job to remember it. But I know so many of you are always looking for more information. You're like... I just want to understand more. And then, you know, just like this patient, she was like, okay, she kind of got it. She doesn't have to understand it all. We talked through it, and she's like, yeah, okay. I was kind of thinking that. I wasn't too worried. My free T3 looked good. I feel good. So I walked her through to make sure that she knew that I knew, okay, this is not the end of the world. We're going to tweak on this, but you're doing great. You're welcome, Kimmy. Thanks for um, listening. And uh, thanks, Steph, for listening as well. Um, if you guys have any questions or other comments, now is your time. Otherwise, we're actually going to end a little bit early. Um, please check out a Discovery Health 
lifestyle.com. I'm getting out a lot of different lifestyle tips. Thyroid is one of them, taking iodine. Um, it's a blog area, really. Articles, 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 references, resources. I just launched my food course for some of you who can't necessarily afford to work one-on-one uh, -on -one with a practitioner. Being able to do some testing and getting dedicated education around that is a great way to start. So please also share that with people. If you've had food allergy testing done and you know somebody else who needs it, point them to my site and they can get started with the food course. I'm going to have a hormone course and I'm going to have a weight loss course. Those are the ones that I've planned so far. Who knows if there's a need for something else, we'll get on that too. But um, keep checking out at discoveryhealthlifestyle.com. Of course, I'm still at drkellyfelmer.com as well. But the lifestyle site is going to have more resources and links and connections and those types of things because all the time I'm trying to make this easier for you and get the information at your fingertips. Um, so Amanda asks, what role does the liver play with the thyroid? So the liver plays a role in everything that happens in your body. So in... Um, so we could apply it in any specific area because it cleans up the body. It's the best filter. It's the best detoxer. It, um, you know, when you take a medication, you know, maybe we should start there. It goes into your gut first and then it goes to your liver. So it gets filtered out. Some of that medication that you think you're taking, even the supplements, goes to your liver. Your liver says, nope, you're not getting any of this. So it tries to protect you. So um, indiscreetly, it's involved with every process in the body. Um, does it play a huge direct role in what I'm talking about tonight? No, but it always plays a role. So I don't want to minimize that too much. If you have a liver problem, that's a whole different story. Um, let's see. Ann asks, what medications do you give to your clients? Well, that's really a broad question. And um, uh, since we're talking about thyroid, and maybe you're thinking about um, what desiccated thyroid. And my preferred desiccated thyroid is Nature Throid. Okay? Nature Throid, the company has been having a problem in the last six months um, because they are so busy they weren't able to keep up with the demand. And so they built a new factory and moving to a new factory and having some difficulty getting their good sourcing because they're a great company that puts very little um, else in their product to make those pills. It's very clean. Um, they got behind. Um, they're still my preferred because they're covered by most insurances. They have smaller dosing increments where the other ones do not. So although um, we've had some struggles, so any of you listening who are on Nature Throid and you've given me calls and we've taken care of it, we're getting through it, I really wish they'd get caught up on their demand, and they will, but Nature Throid is my preferred desiccated thyroid. Do you ever consult for people who are out of state? Absolutely, all the time, Steph. So I do video conferencing. Um, all you have to do, just send me a message. We'll talk more about that. Um, you're welcome, Tony. Thanks for always joining. I appreciate that. Yes, Luda, absolutely. You can take iodine with Hashimoto's. And, okay, over this shoulder, let's see, this whole thing that I'm talking about right here, I talk about in another video as well. On my Facebook page as well as my website, I have two different videos about iodine and Hashimoto's. You need to go there because I explained it all specifically to autoimmune disease, but it really is this process right here and the oxidation process that gets triggered from not enough iodine and then this organification can't happen. And then this um, brake and gas pedal are out of whack. And it creates all of this damage. You need iodine to stop the destruction process because it's one of the reasons that it started in the first place. So, Luda, go find those because I explain it all. Okay? Um, best source of getting iodine. Do I need to take a supplement? 
So there's lots of different sources. Kelp is a good sea vegetable. I think in those, um, I have some slides in those other um, presentations that I was just referring to about iodine to give you specifically the sources. And I'm glancing through um, a PowerPoint that I had had up to see if I have references there of other good sources. I usually do have people take an iodine supplement for the reason that we can control the amount that they're taking. And when uh, it, it is always better, don't let me mislead you, it is always better to get your nutrition through your food. So seaweed, kelp, green things, vegetables, help to give you some iodine. But when you're already doing that, or you can change your diet and you can get a little bit more, but in those cases when you're really deficient and in that autoimmune, you need 6 milligrams a day or 12 milligrams a day or 25 milligrams a day, and you're never going to get that just by eating those foods. So it's really person-dependent, and you can always test there is a simple urine test to find out are you deficient or are you not. I talk about that in those iodine-specific videos as well. Um, Joanne commented that, yes, she's out in Las Vegas, and she and I work together. Thanks, Joanne. Um, do you need to get a test to see if you're low on iodine? You can, okay? Most of the research and the research that I follow from the Midwest shows that we're really deficient in it. Somebody who's hypothyroid, I'm pretty confident they're deficient in it, but it's super easy to test. It costs somewhere around $100, $150 to have it tested, but if you are ever wondering, get it tested. And if you do the spot iodine test, you can also find out, do you have bromine, mercury, and um, some other heavy metals in your urine that block the iodine as well. So it's super easy to test, and I always encourage people to do that. If they're already taking iodine, then it's, it's, you can't test by a spot test, but you can do a loading test. Okay, guys, thanks for all the good questions. Please remember to share my videos. Check out a discoveryhealthlifestyle.com as much as you can. I'm trying to get out there more on social media, so please share and like. I appreciate that so much, and that helps me reach more people who have your same concerns, who have your same questions, and I'm out here to help you get answers for them and to get in the right direction, the right testing, so you can get the results that you need. So I hope you have a wonderful evening. I really appreciate you being here, and I'll see you again soon.